right. I am tired of waiting for that dork. Where is he? Hi, is this the Monjome Digital Entertainment Company? Yes, this is Golden Nova. I should be on the contact list. I could be under Mr. Truesdale. Chaz has a weird sense of humor. Yeah, I reached out about a month ago to contact him, and he never got back to me. Do you know what's going on with that? A book tour? What's it called? Armed like a dragon, duel like Chaz with the power of a blazing vortex. Wow, uh, well, send along my congratulations. Uh, do you know when he'll be available for appearances again? Oh, one day. No, ten. A hundred? A thousand? Hey, you listen here. Chaz may be a big deal, but he's not that big a deal. Good day. <sighs> what am I gonna do now? Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. Remember a while ago when I did some explained videos for charity? Well, after a particularly successful stream, which you can find right here on YouTube every Friday at 8pm Central Time, we met our funding goal. I don't know if I'll ever find the words to properly express how I feel, but the best I can do is, I'm just so proud and happy to have all of you in the community. Thank you all so much for your generosity and for being a part of my life. If you want to check out who we were raising money for, Alexis YT focuses on Duel Links and Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's content, and actually just put out a very heartfelt fanfic reading that I highly recommend. And now, it's time to follow through with some donation incentives. As part of that last push, two people secured their own sponsored explained videos, one of whom you may know from a previous video. Fusion Yu-Gi-Oh!, game shop runner and absolute lad, has set me to the task of compiling, reviewing, and advising you all on the applications of, oh... Jamas. Premiering as the deck to show the Chaz a bit of humility, Ojamas are an odd bunch that have, by virtue of their speedo-laden anatomy, wormed their way into the hearts and minds of duelists everywhere, whether they like it or not. And Konami's been complicit in that regard. Instead of letting these gremlins fade into obscurity, legacy support is still being thrown at them, not only as one of the featured themes in Legendary Duelist 2, but they've even got a new card coming out in Blazing Vortex, a core set! So, at the behest of my sponsor, let's line up our contestants, flip them on their head to get a handle on how they work, and see what cards and themes can stand to be associated with them. It's time to explain Ojamas. But before we continue, a quick reminder to please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed my content so far. That way you can stay up to date on new releases, and my brain makes the happy juice when good numbers go up. Oh, and ringing the bell is a pretty good way to stay on top of things as well. If I do any of my non-explained videos, it's a pretty good way to make sure you don't miss them, as well as my Friday live streams. We also have a Discord where we've got those deep fried memes. And you can also follow me on Twitter if you want to stay in the know on channel updates and my bad takes. Thank you for your patience, and now, back to the video. Let's start by going over the main deck monsters. Every one of them, without exception, is a level 2 light beast monster with 0 attack and 1000 defense. And if that wasn't enough conformity for you, our first subjects, the original trio of yellow, black, and green, are all normal monsters that all share the same flavor text. Quote, He's one of the Ojama trio. It's said that he butts in by any means necessary. It's also said that when the three are together, something happens. And I really don't want to be around for when that happens. Thankfully, for them, their cast has been broadened to include some effect monsters. If you actually want the original trio together to see what happens, then your best bet is with Ojama Red. When they're normal summoned, you can special summon up to four Ojama monsters from your hand in attack position, which is actually surprisingly good. Granted, you do need the setup, but if Ojamas are good at anything, it's at accruing almost an unreasonable amount of raw card advantage. They don't actually do anything on their own, but cards like Red mobilize them in such a way that they can be utilized for things like Link Summoning, which pairs notoriously well with themes that have a ton of cards they want to throw on the grinder. And that upsets me to no end. I guarantee it, if you lose because of a Link board setup by this angry pimple, you'll be seeing Red too. Ojama Blue triggers whenever they're destroyed by battle and sent to the grave, searching you two Ojama cards from your deck to your hand. This has gotten progressively more difficult to trigger incidentally as effect removal has become more and more widespread, so unfortunately you're usually going to have to proc the effect yourself by crashing it into your opponent's monster. The good news is that, because it has zero attack, just about any monster will do. The bad news is that, 
it has zero attack, so you're likely to take a hefty chunk of damage against a powerful board. Just make sure the cards you search are worth it, because otherwise, you'll be feeling pretty blue. And now we have Ojama Pink. I... I don't know, like, I joke about not liking Ojamas, it's the meme, but pink in particular, it's it's the eyes. All the rest keep it down to at most two, but these bulbs. Anyway, if they're sent from the hand or field to the grave, they become a Dark World dealings, where each player draws a card, then discards. The upside is that if you discard an Ojama card, you can choose one of your opponent's unused monster zones and it can't be used until the end phase of your opponent's turn. This is actually a pretty solid inclusion. You're already running a number of cards to activate Oja Magic, which we'll get into in a bit, so you won't have to go out of your way to trigger pink. And while you are giving your opponent the ability to fix their hand as well, the additional zone lock you can incur is another way you can limit or manipulate your opponent's actions. If you can find out which zones will make your opponent's combos possible, you can clog them up before they can even try. They certainly won't be tickled pink. I I can't with the color puns right now, it's, it's too much. It's a sentient piece of bubble gum with googly eyes on it for crying out loud. Alright, time for the support cards. And there's one no more bombastic than Ojama Delta Hurricane. You can only activate it once Ojama's green, yellow, and black are on the field, but it does destroy every card on your opponent's side of the field, which is impressive for a bunch of zero attack goons. Is it powerful? Most certainly. Is it impractical? Arguably more so than Megaton Magical Cannon. Will it stop me from trying to shoehorn it into the deck anyway? Well, I'm sure it'll depend on which way the wind blows. Another staple card is Oja Magic. If the spell is sent from your hand or field to the grave, you can add one each of Ojama's green, yellow, and black from your deck to your hand. This is the card I mean when I say the deck has card advantage in spades. Any discard effect means that a minus one can turn into a plus two on a dime. And along with Ojama Red, does set up the conditions for Ojama Delta Hurricane. But the real magic here is being done by the stage tech, who's doing a fantastic job of keeping the show running. A big round of applause to them. Always make sure to thank your techies. Ojama Trio is a normal trap that summons three Ojama tokens to your opponent's side of the field in defense position that have all the same stats as their contemporaries. They can't be tributed for a tribute summon, and if they're destroyed, their controller takes 300 points of damage. Now, during the time of GX when this card was released, this was a funny way to clog up your opponent's field. But in the Vrains era, tokens like these are too much of a liability, especially when they're being made by a trap card. It does have a recent retrain, Ojama Duo, which summons two tokens to your opponent's field instead of three, but the real reason you run it is for its grave effect. During either player's turn, except the turn it was sent to the grave, you can banish Duo from the grave to summon two Ojamas with different names from your deck. So in this instance, two heads are better than... three? Now, I've already talked about Ojama Simulation and Oja Match in another video, but neither of them are really good in a pure version of the deck. And while Ojama Pajama works best in those kinds of decks, it still works wonders in a pure variant. This continuous trap lets you banish an Ojama from your hand, face up field or grave, to substitute the destruction of an armed dragon or light machine fusion monster you control. If it's sent to the grave, you can special summon as many of your banished Ojamas as you can, but it also has an effect you can activate on field. It lets you add an Ojama card from your deck to your hand, but then you have to discard a card, which basically means quick effect Oja Magic searches for free. Definitely not a card you want to sleep on. Ojama Country is a field spell for the theme that actually turns your monsters into legitimate combat threats. Once per turn, you can send an Ojama card from your hand to the grave to special summon any Ojama monster from your grave. Also, and this is the funniest effect in the entire theme, while you control a face-up Ojama, you switch the original attack and defense of all monsters on the field. So while your monsters won't see a huge change in the stats, at least the ones we've seen so far, this could have a drastic change on your opponents. And it does trigger the effects of Ojama Pink and Magic, so it's not only a way to revive fallen Ojamas, but a great enabler as well. Now, this is where I would put the obligatory Ojama Lime reference, but... Instead, I've got to admit I really haven't sat through any Rada videos, so I'm calling on you to make your best Ojama Lime references in the comments, and I'll pin the one that makes me laugh the most. Especially if it's by a country mile. Now, you'll also notice it mentions a card called Oja Muscle, which is a normal spell that has you targeting an Ojama King you control, destroys every Ojama on the field except the one you selected, and the targeted Ojama King gets a permanent 1000 attack boost for each one destroyed. And since it destroys all Ojamas on either side of the field, it'll also blow up any Ojama tokens you've given to your opponent. 
And while its TCG name would technically exclude it from the archetype, future reprints have given it inclusion into the theme like it always should have. As for the card, well, it's a weird flex, but okay. But what is Ojama King? Well, what if I told you that this GX theme is a fusion archetype? I know, it's a big third act twist. Ojama King is a level 6 beast fusion monster with 0 attack and 3000 defense, requiring one each of Ojama Green, Yellow, and Black. Its problem solving card text is rather outdated, but it reads as follows. Select up to 3 of your opponent's monster card zones. The selected zones cannot be used. It doesn't have an activation time, and it doesn't say unused monster zones, but we can infer it's a continuous effect, and that you can't just uproot monsters by making their zones uninhabitable, though that would be pretty king-like. There's also the slightly smaller Ojama Knight, a level 5 beast instant fusion target with 0 attack and 2500 defense, requiring any two Ojamas, and while they're on the field, they take up two of your opponent's monster zones. Both of them are also obscenely powerful under Ojama Country. Most monsters that have strong attacks will also have competent defenses, so while our tiny Ojamas aren't really a threat in that regard, the members of the... Ojama... Royal Bloodline? Is that the take here? The members of the Royal Order of the Bestocked Eye will certainly trample over the rest of the common folk. Our last card is actually a link of all things, Ojama Emperor. They're a Link 3 with 0 attack, requiring 3 beast monsters that includes at least 1 Ojama. While Ojama Country is on the field, they gain 3000 attack and can't be destroyed by card effects. If your opponent attacks them, your opponent takes any damage you would have taken. Also, once per turn, you can target any non-Link Ojama monster in your grave and special summon them. However, that does lock you into only summoning fusion monsters from your extra deck for the rest of the turn. This is probably the boss monster you're going to want to focus your attention on more than anything else. Being a 3000 point bruiser that can be destroyed by card effects that doesn't need a fusion spell is an easy sell, and being able to revive monsters like your big fusions for free is exquisite. It truly is the royal treatment. So we've got all our cards together, what do we do with them? Well, we could plug in a Light Machine Core and go for the Arm Dragon Catapult Cannon Route, but the Ojama are a peaceful, rustic folk, and disrupting their way of life seems cruel. In more pure terms, we're aiming to go first, rack up a huge amount of card advantage that we then spend on big fusions that lock our opponent's zones to limit their options, and with a little extra push, we swing in for game using Ojama Country to overpower them. But what can we add to help them out? Swarming is a pretty useful tactic for our theme, and we oddly have some great typing to take advantage of some swell cards. Obedient Schooled used to be a little out of a pure version's grasp, but with the inclusion of pink, you now have the requisite three effect monsters. It's no Ojama Delta Hurricane to be sure, but it is an Ojama Emperor with a pink trigger. For a bit lower scaled investment with less restrictions, you can use Rescue Cat, which is an easy Link 2 or Rank 2. Speaking of Xyz monsters, level 2 beasts are a trait shared by Melfi, meaning all their effects can be used with Ojamas. You can even overlay for all their Xyz monsters, so if clogging up zones isn't panning out for you, you can easily pivot to a theme that's only slightly cuter. And speaking of themes we can splash, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Tri Brigade. All that card advantage you get is gonna end up in the grave eventually, making it prime material for your Tri Brigade grave linking effects. And, by the executive command of my sponsor, I need to include another monster. Beaver Warrior. A level 4 Earth Beast Warrior with 1200 attack and 1500 defense. What this creature lacks in size, it makes up for in defense when battling in the prairie. I don't have anything to add here, but Fusion Yu-Gi-Oh! wanted me all to show you the beaver, so... Here they are in all their... glory? Anyway, that's all I've got on Ojamas. They certainly have some of the funniest design out of a rogue deck, and I kinda just want to keep a version of the deck around for giggles. It's certainly one of the most iconic themes in the game, for better or worse, but I hear that when the Ojama tribe comes into contact with a duelist that can fully utilize their silly style, something happens. But now, I want to hear what you think. Will Ojama continue to be the butt of every joke, or do they have even more hidden potential in their odd alien forms? Make sure to let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed, please make sure to like and subscribe. If you want to help me out even more, please make sure to share this video around. If you made it this far, you probably enjoyed what you watched, and I'm sure someone else you know will too. And if you want to keep chazzing it up, there will be a link right about now where you can watch me play Arm Dragon Catapult Cannon Turbo.
Thank you all so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.